My name is Sheila Fox. I started at a little hill in Kitchener called Chicopee. And within three years I was named to the Ontario team. As the ski racing became more competitive, so did the element of danger. People died in races that I was in. You realized when you stood in those starting gates, when you got to that level, that somebody was willing to risk their life to win. And you knew what you had to do if you wanted to beat them. There was actually a pinnacle when I realized that my journey with ski racing was over. I was at Red Mountain, BC, which is where Nancy Green came from, Rosslyn. And it's a very fast women's downhill. And we had been training the downhill the day before the race. And I had come down the pitch, and there, there was a speed trap there, and I had been clocked at 82 miles an hour. But at 82 miles an hour, in slow motion, your skis look like noodles in a spaghetti pot. They are bending and moving and floating. My helmet had levitated up off of my head, so my goggles were actually no longer covering my eyes. My eyes were watering so bad that I couldn't even see what was in front of me. And when I made it by the grace of God over the last three rollers, probably 30, 40 feet up in the air, coming into the finish, I was going so fast and so exhausted, I was probably parallel to the ground trying to stop, only to hit the hay bales, bounce off them, be catapulted into an area where the public was just putting on their ski boots, and just realizing that was completely crazy. I'm lucky to be alive. That was the training day. That night when I was in the hotel, I could hear the rain falling. And I looked out into that dark sky with the rain on the window, and I thought to myself, that course will be unskiable. And the next day I woke up, and they'd been starting and stopping it. The fog would settle into the, the, the valleys, and they would stop the race because there'd be zero visibility. And then it would lift, and they'd start it again. And there was a girl that was the potential woman to win the race and she went down before me and then I heard all the emergency um, walkie-talkies saying that she had gone down that it wasn't good and to send the air ambulance and then it, I think I was running about number 12 and I said to my coach as I got in the start I said I'm done I'm not skiing the race and he said people have stayed back in Ontario for you to race you'll be racing you know, the interesting thing about ski racing is that it isn't really a team sport. A coach is there for, to facilitate you, and you actually have generally more knowledge than the coach has. So it's a precarious position to be offered that suggestion from anybody other than yourself, because you're, in the end, going to be the person that is going to um, be dealing with a lifelong injury or your own life. And so I thought, no, I'm done. My time here, I have come to understand and know that this is not no longer what I want to pursue, that I no longer have the passion. And when you feel that way in a sport that takes so much focus, it's time for you to step down. Really, right after that, because I had always been painting since I was a child, I went into my art to make a living. It just seemed like that was a natural thing for me to do. I had stayed in Collingwood after I finished ski racing, so I would have been just turning 18, and I instantly was supporting myself with my artwork. And for the last 15 years, I've had a gallery in Thornbury. And if I have to think about my journey of my art and what inspires me and why I'm doing my art, I love the beauty in life. I love the beauty in nature. I love the beauty in people.
I love the love. And to present that on canvas or in wood or in tin, to be able to capture the love and the light and the beauty, it's, um, it's, a, it's a gift for me. And then to see other people enjoy that and to have it move other people is just, it's a phenomenal bonus. <laughs>